this is the 40 and Slip with your host, Chris York. But he can smell the Loveland Frogman. It's a Mothman festival. Oh, Mothman, whatever the fuck it is, I don't give a shit. Co-host, Steve Alcorn. I'm lazy, and I don't do YouTube videos anymore, but I still get money from YouTube on occasion. And sometimes special guest, Matt Knapp. Maybe I could go down in history as the first eyewitness of a moth woman. I think you should endeavor to do that. Taking down all things strange since 2013. But my reservation. What would Jesus do, Steve? <laughs> what would Jesus in do? <laughs> in Chris's world, that's called a good day, Steve. Oh, Steve. You're a damn oh, an investigator. I don't know much about that subject. But what subject do I know about? Which means he can hear it on a quiet day. That's <laughs> kind of like one of your cryptid sightings, Steve. Asshole lives matter, Steve. What's the Mothman's moth name? Actual name? Fred Dryer. That's not the Mothman's name. Dude, you would be hard pressed to get me to attend a Bigfoot conference if it was like a block away from. Me. I was gonna say <laughs> if it, I was gonna say if it was in Tulsa. Wolfman Jack was on here. I'm the Wolfman. Another astro- Every time I do any sort of impression, he has to trump me. You're about to witness the strength of creep knowledge. <laughs> Good evening, and welcome to the 40 and Slip. This is episode 112, the I Shot the Sheriff, But I Didn't Shoot the Kennedy episode. Hats off to Alcorn for that one. We've been on a bit of a, kind of a hiatus. Have not been able to fucking get together to do a fucking show for the life of us. <clears throat> We've tried. Yeah. And then we were supposed to do it last night, and my fucking shit got in the way, so... Uh... And I have a bedtime. Yeah. Steve has a Curfew. Curfew. He has to be in bed before the monsters come out. Because if he hears them, by God, it's all over. Because you know I'll never see one. That's right. I'll only ever hear one. The only thing you ever see is inanimate objects come to life. You could see, like, the entire nutcracker in your house if you had all the pieces, but you would never see any type of cryptid monster ghost you just I've seen ghosts no you haven't you've just heard them no 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 I've seen them I've seen a couple actually I don't don't believe you Mm -hmm. not even for a minute I do um yeah we were gonna do the dog man I kinda wanna save it for when Matt's around um (laughs) and I didn't do any research (laughs) yeah Steve didn't do any type of research because I've been, I have been posting quite a few dog man encounter stories, but um, Matt had expressed interest in doing another dog man show, so I had wanted to, but I haven't been able to get with him. So I kind of want to save it for him, because there yeah, is yeah, it's a, not fair. There, it's not fair to do it without him. Well, no, 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 no. Fuck you, because you just don't care. <laughs> um, <laughs> there is a sighting report that he took that I think is pretty interesting. So. Um, and it's been relayed on our show before. If anybody wants to look yeah, for it, it's it's in one of the Dog Man episodes. So I just I, don't find the Dog Man all that interesting. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, yeah, it's another cryptid and whatever. So yeah, Steve didn't prepare, um, and I wasn't about to. I tried. I really tried. <clears throat> I wasn't about to try to plow through that, but um, we happened to have a hangout last night, Steve and I, with uh, two fans of the show. I don't know if uh, those two fans are... You think they're okay with us mentioning their names, Steve? I think so. Gary Gary Shaw and Chris Day, I don't think they'd have a problem with no, that. No, I don't think they would either. Um, so go ahead. Okay. It was uh, Gary Shaw and Chris Day. And, um, 
yeah, so we we had a you know quite the little hangout with those guys last night, and Steve got talking about the JFK assassination with Gary, um, who's from the UK. I don't know where from Gary. in the UK, but he's from over there. Um, so those two went on this uh, huge rant about JFK, and there were some pretty interesting things like. F- volleyed back and forth i thought well i thought gary's very knowledgeable on even though he's you know from the uk uh he's very knowledgeable on the subject but see gary and i have some disagreements on the subject and that was kind of i liked it it was a good debate it was really cool so thanks gary so the one of the more interesting things that i took from it was Gary's uh, thoughts on the assassination that that maybe everybody's looking in the wrong direction. Maybe it was JFK that had JFK assassinated. He said that? I, I missed that part. You missed that one? How did I miss that? Uh, wow. I know it was before you left. JFK had JFK assassinated. Yes. So basically, okay. he wanted to make his mark in history. He knew he was dying. So Dying of what? I don't know. Gary was saying something about it last night. Okay. So, and that... Uh, that's what he did to make his mark in history. Now, I just thought it was an interesting theory. You know, we could come up with a whole series of uh, conspiracy, you know, podcasts just based on that. Because I've never heard that theory before in my life. (laughs) (laughs) And it must have been after I left the hangout, because I'm sure I would have had some comments on that. Really? Yes. Yes. Because I thought the JFK discussion ended when you left. It may have, but I don't recall that particular. Yeah, because state. after after you left, we started talking about climate change. Oh, I hate climate change. <laughs> <laughs> I like it to be warm. I hate but climate change. I don't want change. it to be warm all the time. Uh, so anyway, the main the main part of. Uh, the discussion that I had with Gary was the events leading up to the actual shooting. So any, anywhere from like the time that Lee Harvey Oswald got to work that morning and what his actions were to the time that the president was shot. That was the main, my main focus on what I find the most interesting about the case, whether or not we can determine with 100% certainty that Lee Harvey Oswald was, in fact, the shooter. Not that he acted alone, but that he actually even pulled the trigger. And that was uh, the debate I was having with Gary last night. And I, and I think there's a good case to say that he may not have. Sorry, I got a text. <laughs> because, you know, we're doing a show and all. <laughs> yeah, and, and you had to check it. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, when... No, well, no, I, I no, I don't, Steve. I don't because it's no, only no, we guess. only record for about fifty minutes to an hour, and the world of the telephone can end for a few moments. I know mine's sitting over somewhere else. I uh, I agree, or not? <laughs> yeah. How else would I be connected to the outside world? Yeah. How else? Anyway, so the timeline, and I think there's some interesting facts about the timeline of when the alleged shot, well, when the uh, shots took place and, uh, and leading up to that. So, and my point was that between, and this is all according to actual witness testimony. This, I didn't get this from any conspiracy books or anything like that. I, I did listen to a lot of those types of shows and found most of it to be 100% bullshit <laughs> for the most part. Uh, people trying to sell books and shit. 
Uh, and we're going to assume, as I did with Gary last night, that all three shots came from the book depository, which there's some debate on that in my mind, too, but we won't go there for this particular instance. But anyway, so at 12, fifth, at 12 o'clock, Oswald was on the sixth floor. That is 100%. Every witness who was working with him that day had left for lunch. Uh, he was on the sixth floor, right? I guess I'm I'm not a an aficionado on this. Well, I've been reading all a the con- witness testimony. A connoisseur, if you will, Steve. I'm not. He was working on the sixth floor at that time. It was time to break for lunch, and it just happened to coincide with when um, the parade, you know, the presidential motorcade or whatever they call it, was coming through. So everybody left for lunch, but. Oswald didn't at that particular moment. Fast forward about 15 minutes. So there's about a 15-minute time period uh, where he was unaccounted for. The shooting happened at 12.30, so let's fast forward 15 minutes. Um, So at 12.15, a woman, and I can't recall her name right now because I didn't have time to, to look it up, but one of the fellow employees there at the book depository saw him in the lunchroom. So that was at 12.15. Now, the shooting happened at 1230. Uh, one of the witnesses had forgotten his pack of cigarettes on the sixth floor, and he went back up to get the uh, cigarettes. And I've heard accounts that he actually ate his lunch there, uh, and this would be between 12 and 1225. He did not see Lee Harvey Oswald on the sixth floor at that time. So... He ate his lunch there. He went down to the fifth floor. He got because there were some of his buddies there. Uh, so then, of course, at twelve thirty, the president gets shot. Right, right at twelve thirty, and the uh, witness that had eaten his lunch up on the sixth floor was one of the witnesses that said, "You know, it came from above us." So they know that at least two shots, and I think he testified that two shots came from above is what he heard. But now there's also accounts of them hearing the shells hit the floor, but they didn't hear any walking around or anything up there. So at 1232, one of the motorcycle cops from the motorcade had heard the shots coming from the building. So right at 1230, and he determined that he believed they came from the building. So he went to the building, he got the building manager. And by 1232, they had come to the second floor which is where the lunchroom was, and right there is Lee Harvey Oswald in the lunchroom, okay? So my concern, and, and of course, he was drinking a Coke. He, he, uh, he had eaten his lunch, apparently. So was he actually on the sixth floor at the time the president got shot? That is my thing. And if not him, who? But that's probably for another show. I don't know, Steve. So two people put him in that lunchroom between, let's let's even give it a half an hour, okay? Between 12 and, and uh, 12.30, 32, 12.32, and, and of course the shooting happened at 12.30. The one woman said she saw him in there, and, and you know, I, I we, you and I had a discussion about witness testimony and how that can be flawed, but, I mean, these were people who worked with, the guy they knew him you know they'd only worked with him six weeks but six weeks is a sufficient amount of time to become familiar with somebody i would assume uh the only suspicious activity that he was reported to have that day was carrying the alleged curtain rods in the paper bag into the building i'm not sure if actually anybody's seen him carry him into the building i haven't got to that part of the testimonies yet but uh we know that he did have a long bag and he claimed there were curtain rods in it so he did have something that day and the police did search the car that he rode to work in that morning and they weren't there so that's i'm assuming that he took them in the building with him or whatever was in that bag so but my biggest issue with the whole thing is if he was seen in the lunch if her testimony was correct and he was seen in the lunchroom at 12 15 and then again at 12 32 that's a pretty short fucking period of time to go back up to the sixth floor, get settled, take your shots, 
and then two minutes later be down in the lunchroom and the lunchroom had a, a like one of those doors that closed behind you automatically real slow you know you know what kind of door i'm talking about like a screen door how it closes real slow behind you yeah the lunchroom had that kind of door <clears throat> and it was it was closed so and i guess it closed super slow so but when the cop came in he was already in the lunchroom and he had either right at that point or right after the cop talked to him bought a coke the cop testified to him, seeing him drinking a coke cola in the lunchroom and he was identified by the building manager that was with him so it wasn't like the cop just assumes he saw lee harvey oswald he knows he saw lee harvey oswald because he was identified by the building manager so that's a pretty short period of time and we know that the other guy was up in the lunch uh, up on the sixth floor eating his lunch at the time be, you know before 12 30 just before 12 30. he had enough time to go down get a spot on the fifth floor and uh which is one floor down and uh meet his buddies to see the president go by and it's also been said and i haven't verified it yet that the parade route was 12 minutes behind schedule so i mean it there's just a lot of things there to me that don't quite i don't know don't quite add up uh, people have debated it for a long time a long long time i've heard i've heard so many different versions of you know how this whole thing could have gone down may have gone down should have gone down <laughs> well yeah i'm not going to get into all the different 16 different shooter theories that there are or 20 million different shooter theories that there are um, i'm going to assume for the sake of argument that there was one and it was from that spot just for the lee harvey oswald part of it uh, also, I, I do believe that there could have been somebody somewhere else, but <clears throat> I just don't think that it's sufficiently proven beyond a shadow of a doubt that it was him that pulled the trigger. Yes, they claim to have found his gun there, uh, but when they did gunpowder residue on him, you know, gunpowder residue tests, they came back inconclusive. What they did show was he had nitrate on his hands which is part of what's in gunpowder right but it's also in print so he handled books for a living so you can't really um you can't really go by that and uh, and from what i un understand he had no gunpowder or nitrate on his face and shooting a rifle you know you have to the way you have to hold it you're going to get gunpowder on your face you know the blowback from the go i don't know what they call it uh, from the gun, you know. And you have to assume that he didn't have time to wash his hands and his face in that amount of time. Two minutes, right? Sure. Because that's how long that's how long it allegedly took him to get back down to the second floor from the sixth, which is definitely possible. Uh, but he wouldn't have had time to clean up or wash his hands or anything he had he would have had just enough time to dispose of the gun which he hit it on the north side of the building i believe and uh run down the stairs but he wasn't sweating he was you know it wasn't he didn't act as a guy who had just shot somebody but then it does get a little suspicious after that because he casually walks out the front door you know catches a bus or a cab and goes home yeah, it was a bus. He caught a bus. Uh, and then he allegedly shoots the cop, which I haven't looked into as much. But So did he do it? Did Lee Harvey Oswald kill John Kennedy? I don't know. I wasn't there. But have I presented a, a decent case? I think I have that there there can be some doubt as to whether it was he was actually the trigger man. Did he have knowledge of it? Uh, he may have. He he seemed nonchalant that day. Uh, the guy that gave him a ride to work, which he wrote, I, I think he rode to work with daily. Um, said, "Hey, you know the president's coming today," and he kind of just shrugged it off. He didn't. 
uh, seemed to, you know, care one way or the other. But he was allegedly uh, pro Castro, you know, sympathizer. Right. So in that case, he wouldn't have, you know, thought too much of John Kennedy, obviously. But even Fidel Castro was interviewed, obviously, about you know, the killing of Kennedy. And he says, I wouldn't have done something like that. That would have been disastrous for my country. You know, they would have declared war and all that shit. And he's right. Castro was right. They would have. They would have went over there and stomped his fucking ass is what they would have done if there was proof that he was involved in it. So <clears throat> just being a pro-Castro sympathizer doesn't make you, you know, hate the president of the United States. Kennedy was actually in talks with Castro at that time. Now, I don't know if that was public knowledge, <clears throat> but they were about to sit down and, you know, try to work things out on a more diplomatic level <clears throat> instead of, you know, all the, uh, uh, what do you call it? The uh, embargoes and shit. Right, so, right, right. <clears throat> so I don't know that being of a different political idealism is is enough reason to believe that he had motive to shoot the president the guy wasn't stupid he couldn't hold a job for shit but he wasn't a stupid man i mean he did a tv interview a few weeks or a month or so it might have been in august i believe it was in august of 63 he did a tv interview about his views on marxism and uh, Castro and stuff like that. And there was a anti-Castro Cuban, a Cuban refugee on the show with him. And he really tried to get him to say something bad about Kennedy. And he wouldn't, you know, he says, you know, because Castro had called him a ruffian, you know, Kennedy, a ruffian and uh, basically call him and calling him a terrorist and shit like that. Uh, Oswald never, you know, disagreed with the guy. He said, no, I don't believe he is that way. So it's hard for me to, to uh, reconcile a statement like that with pulling the trigger. He never talked to anybody about it. You know, he never said, said he hated the president. There's no proof of it anyway. I haven't seen any. He never said, you know, I wish John Kennedy was dead. Nothing. So I don't know. I, I find it hard to believe. So who that, done it? Well, I'm not saying he didn't, but I'm just saying it's there's some doubt in my mind as to what his motivations were. Was he just trying to make a name for himself? You know, I don't think that's the way he would have done it. He, or his is wife there was, a big conspiracy behind it all? Well, he had a, a young daughter. You know, I think she was less than two at the time one or two years old, and a, and a child on the way. I don't know that, you know, and now he was separated from his wife, and he had, you know, he wasn't a very good uh, husband. That's, you know, matter of record. He, he even said that himself, that he had beat, beat on his wife a few times. Uh, but everybody that knew him testified that that he was a good father and that he would you know he took very good care of his children and he and he it was apparent that he loved his children and as a father myself and i'm sure you know i wouldn't want to jeopardize that by shooting the president of the united fucking states i'm just saying you know you have to know something bad's going to happen to you if you do something like that and you may not live through it I mean, that had to run across his mind if, if he's the one who did it. Yeah, but if people like um, uh, the BTK killer, he was a fucking father and a family man. Yeah, it's a and different situation. No, though. it's not a different type of situation. And I he, believe it is. And he, you know, he was, did everything, everyone seemed to think that he was completely fucking normal. Well, the reason I say it's a different situation is because... That was all done in private, you know. This Kennedy assassination was a very public event, and Oswald, if he did it, would have had to have known that. You yeah, know, but if you're gonna get... if you're gonna try to kill the president, it's going to probably kind of have to be a public event. But with the BTK guy, 
you know, he would have been of the mindset that, you know, yeah, it's going to be in the news, but nobody's ever going to suspect me. I'm doing it. I'm hiding this, you know, because it wasn't done as a public and and event. Lee Harvey Oswald it wasn't, wasn't trying to hide. Like he was, I don't he think was, he, he was, tried he, that hard. He casually walked out the building. He waited for a bus. He even talked to people in front of the building, allegedly, uh, you know, showed somebody where the telephone was. He testified to that, you know. Uh, yeah, he showed a guy where the telephone was. Somebody had, He claimed it was a Secret Service agent had asked him where the telephone was. Other people believe now that it was Jim Lair from the McNeil Lair News Hour because he was on the site at the time, and he had asked a man at the, you know, at the entrance of the building where the telephone was. Allegedly, he waited for the guy, made sure he got to the telephone, and then went and caught a bus. And then, allegedly again, because uh, there's a couple different variations of the story, and I'm not positive exactly which one, uh, when he left his apartment, he went up to the bus stop. He, he wasn't running. He wasn't walking. He went to the bus stop. Now, whether he caught a bus there or not, I do not know. Uh but because it gets a little fuzzy after that, because it kind of has to, if you want to believe he also killed Tippett that day, J.D. Tippett, the, the police officer. Because if he caught a bus, then he wouldn't have been able to do that. If he, But his landlady testified to the fact that he was waiting at the bus stop. So he wasn't, like, running. He wasn't perspiring. He wasn't, uh, you know, in any way acting... Like a man, I, I, I would think, just killed the president. Now, of course, that could have been his plan. You know, stay calm, cool, collected, and then just go about your business like nothing ever happened. Of course, he left his gun up there, if it was his, and, and if that's the truth, you know. He left his gun up there, so they're going to connect it to him, you know. Right. Although, now, the only fingerprints they found on the gun were on the trigger guard, which, you know, there was no... Uh, fingerprints on the stock or the barrel uh there was a partial palm print found later on the barrel a lot of people believe it was planted i do not uh but in disassembling the the rifle at one point or another he had left a palm print on the barrel and it was under the stock from what i understand half under and so unless he had time to clean the prints off the gun for the most part except and miss the trigger guard um, I don't know. <laughs> you don't, th I wouldn't think he would have had time to clean anything off that gun. You know, the prints. If he was seen in the lunchroom two minutes after the, the shooting. I mean, that's a, that's a short period of time to stash a gun, hide it on the other side of the building, on the other side of that floor, uh, get down four floors to a lunchroom. I mean, it's, it's a lot of stuff to do in that short amount of time. So that's just my opinion on that. Now, whether he actually did it, I don't know. I can't, I can't 100% say that he did or did not. See, it's just, it's, it's one of those conspiracy theories or, um, whatever you want to call it, uh, the instances that I just don't, I don't know. I just don't get into it. I have never... I've never really wanted to look into it. I've heard a bunch of different stuff about it. I've heard different people, like I said, different people talk about it and give their views. And, you know, hey, I I, I think there was a Secret Service, uh, Secret Serviceman that was interviewed on uh, Opie and Anthony once. And mm -hmm. I, you know, I, of course, he told the whole account of how the day went down and he didn't seem to think there was anything out of the ordinary but you know again you know it's one of those things where people will say oh well he's in on it or you know well, whatever you, know, you get your conspiracy people but the other part of the other part of what puzzles me is and, and gary and i had a long discussion about this part of it uh 15 minutes after the shooting so at twelve forty-five, right uh there was already a description of oswald put out now, they didn't use his name, just, you know, his height, size, weight, what he was wearing, all that shit. 
an all points bulletin or I guess it's what we call it nowadays. I don't know what they call it then. It went out over on police radio and actually on, you know, public radio stations at the time at 1245. Gary says, you know, uh, they did an inventory of the employees and Oswald, Oswald was the only one that wasn't there. Now I disagree with Oswald being the only one that wasn't still there because uh, this is 15 minutes after the president was shot. Gary says that they would have most likely locked the building down. And I know that, I, I don't know that that's the case, but you, if you watch any of the videos, the newsreel videos of the, that day, and they're showing pictures of all the people in front of uh, the Texas School Book Depository, and you got to imagine all the employees there, I don't know how many, but it, let's say 50 employees or so. Uh, there could have been less. There could have been more. Uh, how do they get all those people together? Do a head count in 15 minutes. You know, even at my shop, if something really bad went down, there's only like 10 of us. Uh, it would take all of 15 minutes to make sure that everybody was in there. And that's only like 10 of us, you know. So I don't, I don't, all the people milling around that building, all the police officers, all the Secret Service type people, you know, how do you get a head count on all your employees in a building that size? I mean, because it's a, it's a good sized building and the sixth floor isn't the only part of the building. I mean, there's more floors and there's more people working there. I mean, uh, how do you get a head count that quick? And how do you get that description out that quick? You know, unless somebody had some inside information or he had said something to somebody. And I, I still have a hard time with that timeline. Everything that happened in that last 45 minutes, you know, from 12 noon to 1245. From 12 noon to 1245 is the biggest issue with the whole case for me. So... Well, we should we should definitely see if we can get Gary to talk about that whole JFK is behind the JFK assassination. I would like to hear theory. his theories on that. Uh, how I missed it, I don't know. Maybe it got lost in translation. You know, he is from another country and speaks some weird language. I I don't understand. <laughs> yeah, sure, Steve. <laughs> He speaks the Queen's English. <laughs> yeah. You and I don't understand it. Now, as far as the headshot goes, uh, well, we can we can go into that a little bit if you want, the, the shooting, the actual shooting, because I do have an opinion on that as well. <laughs> okay. So we know that allegedly Oswald or whoever fired three shots from the sixth floor, right? And that would all, all those shots would have come from behind the, the president. So every shot would have had to have come in from that trajectory behind the president. And my only issue with that theory is I, I can buy three shots. Although in 19, I believe it was 1978, the House Select Committee on Assassinations bought into the fact that there was actually a shot from the grassy knoll. Uh, so that would make four shots. But if we're just going by the original Warren Commission investigation, we, we'll go with the three-shot theory. The first shot allegedly missed the car altogether, okay? And there was a guy under the triple underpass. I think his name was Teague or Tag, and he was actually injured by that. And so now this is according to the Warren Commission. Uh it, the bullet hit the pavement or the curb there and uh, either fragments of the bullet hit him or pieces of the, the pavement. Uh, so that that's where the first shot allegedly went. The second shot, alleged, now this is the magic bullet, Chris. The second shot hit Kennedy uh, in the upper back to the right side of his spine, went through his throat struck John Conley, the, the governor of Texas, in the back, busted, I think, his fifth rib on the way out, hit him in the wrist, and then lodged in his 
thigh. So that's seven injuries. You know, entrance, exit, entrance, exit, uh, you know, all that. Okay, so that's the second bullet. Uh, the third bullet is the one that, you know, the fatal shot to Kennedy. Of course, I think the second one, if if the Warren Commission is correct, is the fatal. It would have been fatal. Fatal's throat, and although it's possible they could have done a tracheotomy, but I doubt it. I, I doubt that that he would have survived that second one. But so that's the three shots. That's how they're accounted for. Um, the biggest issues I have with though that theory is number one: all the doctors at Parkland Hospital claimed that the throat wound was not an exit; it was an entry wound because it was very small. Now, whether they're just imagining, you know, that a bullet, because they obviously wouldn't have known the caliber of bullet, caliber of bullet at the time they saw the wound. Uh, so it is still possible that that shot came through the back. However, with the headshot, uh, every doctor at Parkland Hospital said that they've seen an entrance wound in the temple, the right temple, and that the back of the head was blown off. And you can look into all their testimonies. It's what they say originally in, uh, before the Warren Commission. <clears throat> now, Arlen Specter did some uh, really interesting... Because uh, his head went back into the left, Steve. Back well, I don't even care about the that. There's, there's, studies to show, there's studies to show that that is possible. And and Gary was 100% right when we talked about that last night. There are studies to show that even if it's a shot from behind, uh, your head can still jerk back. And I've seen those tests done on, like, ballistic gel. And, and the Warren Commission actually had a goat shot. They shot a goat. No, they didn't do it themselves. But they uh, <laughs> the video is on the Internet. You can find it. The Warren Commission shot a live goat or had somebody, a marksman, or uh, somebody who was trained in weapons, uh, shoot a live goat to prove that theory, that the head can go back and to the right or whatever. It can go backwards. But the doctors at Parkland Hospital had 40 minutes uh, to try to resuscitate the, uh, the president, and they all described an exit wound in the back and an entrance wound in the front. So if that is the case then obviously Oswald couldn't have shot him in the back of the head. So then you automatically have conspiracy because now you have a shot from the front. Now let's assume the shot did come from the back and all those doctors at Parkland Hospital were mistaken. And they just, even actually the some of the people at the autopsy believed that, the, uh, not some, all the guys at the autopsy testified to the fact that it was an exit wound. And then they changed their they changed their testimony before the Warren Commission uh, after they were questioned in a unique way by our inspector. I've looked into it, uh, but we won't go into that right now because I don't want to get into the Warren Commission being part of the conspiracy because I don't know. I think they had a theory and they wanted to stick to it. That's for sure. But <clears throat> let's talk about the magic bullet for a second. The magic bullet was found on a stretcher in Parkland Hospital. Now, a lot of people will claim that it was in pristine co uh, condition. It was not, but it wasn't <clears throat> all that damaged either. <clears throat> there was there was markings on the bullet for sure, and you can see that it was partially deformed, but not very badly. Uh, you can look at the exhibits on the internet. They're there. It's, I think it's it, CE399 is the actual number from the Warren Commission, CE399. Could be four ninety nine, but I think it's three ninety nine. So you can take uh, you can take and look at the actual bullet. So this bullet, if what they say is correct, went through President Kennedy, exited President Kennedy, went through and exited John Conley twice, and hitting bone on the way, uh, a uh, uh, rib, and went through his wrist, hit the wrist bones and then lodged in his thigh. Uh, and that bullet comes out with very little damage. How is that possible? I don't know. That has always gotten me. 
I'm not saying one bullet couldn't have caused all those uh, injuries. I'm not going to say that because, uh, you know, it depends on the seating position and all that and how, how that all went down. Uh, but it's fucking, how does it's that bullet... fucking ancient aliens, Steve. Well, time, it's time. Tra- that, it's but... time traveler, Steve. Seven injuries, one bullet, and it comes out in, you know, you couldn't have fired it again. It was, it was deformed a little bit, but even on uh, ballistic tests of that particular type of bullet, anytime it hit bone, it, it will, you know, mushroom out just like any other bullet would do. It was, it wasn't anything special. It was just a, a cheap bullet. It wasn't, you know, like some sort of uh, super special bullet or anything. And I don't have a lot of uh, firearm experience, so I can't say for 100% certain, but I'm pretty sure a bullet doing that much damage to people would have more damage to itself. You could be right, Steve. And I'm, the, I'm not a bullet connoisseur either. Maybe we should have had, okay, a, we should have had an expert on, Steve. I am an expert. You don't, you don't see the the way to be an expert is to have a say microphone it. in front of you. No, you just say I'm an expert, and that's it. That's all you have to do in conspiracy theory circles. Anyway, I'm the expert. Listen to me, and and that's what people will do. They'll listen to you, and and you know you can win arguments that way. Well, I'm the expert. See, see how that works. No, I don't. Ask me a question, Chris. See, Steve, I have rational thought. I also know you. Well, I, I'm the expert on that, Chris, and no, I, I'd have to say no. You don't You don't have rational thought. Oh. See? See how that works? No, I still don't. I'm the expert. If you say I'm the expert in front of anything, you can win an argument. But anyway, John Conley testified before the Warren Commission and was adamant that he was not hit when the Warren Commission claims that he was. So the uh, second bullet, the magic bullet, you can see in the Zabruder film, or Zapruder, I think it is, with a P, not a B, the Zapruder film that uh, John, John Kennedy clenches his throat when that bullet comes through. And you can see that plain as day. And John Conley, at that time, is turned to the side. <clears throat> John Conley testified that I believe that was the first bullet, actually. I think it was the second bullet that missed. I think I might have had the order mixed up. Regardless, John Conley testified that he saw the president grasping his throat and that after that is when he was shot. And you can pretty much tell that if you go frame by frame on the Zapruder film that John Conley is correct about that. If that is the case, then that uh, that bullet that hit uh, Kennedy in the throat cannot be the one that went through John Conley. If the bullet doesn't so, fit, <clears throat> you must acquit. Well, if you look at that one little piece of testimony and and compare it against the film, it is pretty clear that Conley's already turned around uh, looking at the president, just like he testifies, uh, to see where or he didn't even actually you know know when he turned around. He heard the first shot. He says, I heard the first shot, and I was turning to look to see where it came from, and that's when he saw the president holding his throat, and then is when he felt, you know, the bullet go after the second shot. After he heard this, actually he claims he didn't hear the second report. He heard the third one, and he knows it was the third one because he's seen the brain matter flying all over. So the, the one that hit the president in the head. So Conley, allegedly, by his own testimony and pretty much backed up by the Sapruder film, if you watch it frame by frame, didn't get hit by the same bullet that hit the president in the throat. And so that kind of throws that whole magic bullet theory out the door. And if that magic bullet did not cause all those injuries, and Conley's testimony is correct, then there's a conspiracy. There has to be. There has to be at least two shooters at that point. Because... There was only three shells found. There's there's debate about that, but I've seen the the uh, evidence photos taken on that day. There were three shells there, uh, in the school book depository. 
and there's only three shots fired from that area. So if <clears throat> Conley's not hit by that second bullet, then you have a conspiracy. And we have a second shooter that's never been found and prosecuted and 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 gone to trial for this. So those are my theories. I could be 100% wrong, Chris. Oswald could have been a lone nut. Oswald could have even been the trigger man up there. He could have taken any one of the three to four to 12 shots that people claim uh, or none of them. It, it's hard like, to say. Like I said, I, I let you have that with this because I, I have zero fucking interest in the JFK assassination. And you, well, you had said, and you had it. said that you were like all in, and you were fucking doing all this research, and I was like, "Fuck it, let him have that," you know, because we did talk about it well, for a is, while last night. And I like well, this is my research. I like <laughs> listening to it, and I like hearing about it. I guess a little, well, but I'm not like most conspiracy theories. You can pretty much reconstruct a lot of what happened, you know, because of witness testimony. Now, I'm not going to go into how many people. There's so much debate about how many people heard shots from the grassy knoll or or heard them come from the book depository or 25 other different places, you know, the triple underpass and the grate under the street and all that shit, which is, they're all possibilities, okay? Uh, but if you go back to just witness testimony and and to the important players like John Conley, who was in the car, and the people who had seen Lee Harvey Oswald that day and what about that time, then it kind of, you know, to me, raises a couple of questions that I haven't seen satisfactorily, satis, how do you say that? Satisfactorily addressed, because there's some, I, I don't know that there's a way to address that. You know, people seen a gunman at the sixth floor. I mean, it's not that there wasn't one. I, there. I don't there know, was Steve, one there. But I drank too much coffee and I got to pee. So you keep talking. Okay. Uh, so are we still recording? Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to talk while Chris is gone. That's like weird because I only do that on my own YouTube channel. So what I want is for people to. You know, leave their comments below and, and tell me how wrong or how right I am if my concerns are correct or if I'm just totally, you know, trying to justify uh, simple things by coming up with my own theories of how things went down that day. But uh, the testimony of John Conley is a matter of record. The testimony of the woman who saw Oswald in the lunchroom is a matter of record. Uh, the police officer is a matter of record. And I think Chris is back, so I don't have to talk anymore. Ah, I feel better. <laughs> oh, yes. thank God you're back. I fucking had to I go. Am not, I am not good. Yeah, to interrupt a show, Chris. I mean, I got in trouble for that earlier. I fucking... With a text message. Hey, I, listen, I didn't have a text message. I had to piss. It's a little different, Steve. So, so I think, and, and uh, I think at this point I'm done with, uh, you know, tonight's version of the John F. Kennedy stuff. I would like to look into it a lot further. I want to go and comb the witness testimony for, for real. I haven't had enough time to do enough research to find out that everything I'm saying is 100% accurate. But... <clears throat> Every source that I found so far, it's pretty much showing that. I want to go through the actual Warren Commission testimonies, too. Although they didn't call a lot of the witnesses who may have added some good information or may not have, you know. I'm sure they had a lot of fucking things to do <laughs> and a lot, of witnesses to, uh, a lot of witnesses to interview and shit like that. But uh, And I won't go in tonight with the Jack Ruby stuff, although I think he may have acted alone. I don't, I think a lot of the times we, we make connections that don't really exist in this particular case, especially <clears throat> like Oswald to Ruby and Ruby to every, you know, mob boss in the entire United States. When the guy ran a fucking strip club and 
the only connections he really had with the mob was when he was a kid and he grew up in Chicago and then he did some running, you know, messenger work for the, the mob because there was, you know, that's back in the day, teen gangs would run messages for the uh, mafia and stuff. And that's the only real connection <clears throat> that I found so far. The only 100% solid connection to Jack Ruby and anybody in the mob. He did do some, uh, you know, go to uh, different places to get strippers for his club, you know, work up contracts. And most of the people who were in that business at the time were, in fact, mafia. But <clears throat> that doesn't mean that he actually had a connection to these people other than a business relationship for his club. You know, there's no, as far as I know, because I haven't really dug into that side of things yet, but as far as I know, there's a lot of uh, contemplation that the guy was a fucking nut. And all some I can, of the all te I can tell testimony you he's given kind of shows that. Is that people are going to debate this forever. It's it's going to go on forever. <clears throat> We're never going to know it's, it's until true. until the first time somebody builds a fucking time machine and they send James Franco back in time to uh, you know, try and stop the Kennedy assassination uh, assassination or whatever. Then Well, everybody in his <clears throat> brother has uh come up with a who done it in this in this situation and it goes anywhere from Lyndon Johnson uh, to the mafia to the CIA and FBI and Russia and Cuba and I mean you can't really put a finger on who if there was a conspiracy who would have been behind it because there's so many uh, people who could have been there's, behind there's it so, if they really wanted to there's so many threads <clears throat> there's well, the so thing is, many threads what was the climate like back then? We still had segregation, so uh, Kennedy was working against that. So you have all your, and he's in Texas, which is at that time, and maybe even still today, but I don't know. For, for the most part, I think it's it's not, but <clears throat> you know, pretty uh, pretty racially charged place back in in the early '60s. I mean, that's pretty much the heart of. Uh, of uh, like the Ku Klux Klan and all that stuff. So those people could have done it, you know. Uh, you had the Red Scare not that long before that. You had the Bay of Pigs debacle not that long before that. So you got all your Cubans and your communists pissed off. Uh, the John Kennedy and Robert Kennedy were really, really fucking hard on the organized crime. So you got all those guys pissed and off. And Mimi Beardsley. You know, so it, <clears throat> I'm not. I'm not familiar. Is she the lady at the carnival with the beard? No. Oh, see, I thought that was a stage name. <laughs> no. I don't know who Mimi Bur Beardsley is. Okay. You continue. And you're not going to tell me either. No, you're no. not going to tell me because you want me just to waste away in it. and. Yeah, because... I, I don't you, know if I'm looking... <laughs> you've, you've looked into all this JFK stuff and you don't know who Mimi Beardsley is. Well, because I haven't looked... It, I don't know. I may have seen the name, but I have no idea. You know what I'm doing, right? No. Mimi Beardsley. There's a song. There's a song about Mimi. Is there? Well, because her name wasn't... <laughs> See, she's she's had other names. Right? I don't know. She was an intern for President Kennedy. Mm-hmm. Mimi Beardsley. What does she have to do with the assassination? Nothing. Well, she allegedly had an affair with the president. You said that the president and his brother were fucking with the mafia and shit like that. And I said, and well, also wait. Mimi Beardsley. <clears throat> I get it now because she ah, allegedly had an affair. Ah. According, to her own, according to her story. And her name is Mimi Alford, A-L-F-O-R-D. <clears throat> she went by Beardsley. Uh, Marion. She Marian went by way of JFK's Beardsley. hog is what she did. Now, uh, it, it is alleged that Kennedy was, you know, quite the player. And uh, even perhaps. Has and that he was, and that he was quite the, the Minuteman, too. 
he had slept with Marilyn, Marilyn Monroe, allegedly, but we don't know that for sure, unless it's been, you know, obviously she's been dead for a long time, too. So No. But, uh, so, the thing, the, the, to wrap it up, even Robert Kennedy, before he was assassinated, obviously, uh, which is another whole conspiracy bullshit s- story, but even Robert Kennedy believed that there could have been a conspiracy to kill his brother. And his his thoughts on it were that it would it would have had to have been organized crime, the mafia, because of their stance on that situation at the time. So the conspiracy theory isn't just for nutty people like me. Uh, it, it actually, you know, it went to the highest levels. Even Lyndon Johnson thought that there could have been a conspiracy. Uh, a lot of people think he was the conspiracy, but I, I don't know. I don't think so. But it is, it is kind of odd that he, even though it was, it looked like he uh, supported Kennedy on the Vietnam War. Uh, the first thing that Lyndon Johnson did when he got into office was basically change the, the commitment to Vietnam. So, with Kennedy still in office, it's pretty certain. Not 100%, but pretty certain that we wouldn't have actually uh, committed all the troops to Vietnam and, and stuff like that. But Lyndon Johnson made sure that that would, uh, would change really quick. And that was the first business meeting he had was with the Joint Chiefs. And they changed the, the executive order that uh, started the whole you know, thing. Because uh, Kennedy was pulling troops out at that point. In fact, only one plane full of uh, troops had uh, been sent home and then after Johnson took over that stopped Re- really freaking quick so that's obviously another conspiracy theory that Johnson wanted the war to help his buddies in Texas who were you know manufacturers of wartime type materials but uh, I don't believe that but his stance on the war was totally different so but anyway I'll wrap that up that's it that's my thoughts for tonight we can do another show right I'll do the uh, Jack Ruby version. Oh, wonderful. I'll get to take a nap. (laughs) It was the Steve show tonight, really, wasn't it? It was the fucking Steve show. (sighs) Well, it's it's one thing. And and when I started looking into this kind of thing, you know, Fortean and conspiracy type topics, it was the very first one that I, I looked into when I was younger as far as uh, conspiracy theories go. I had looked into Yuri Geller was my actual first Fortean topic, but as far as conspiracy theories go, JFK was the top of the fucking list for me, and I used to get into it, you know, big fucking time. I've forgotten more than I can remember for sure. So when I recently read... Uh, 112263, I think, was the title of the was Stephen King novel. Right. And it was a time, time, tra- good novel. I didn't like the way it ended particularly, but it was all about what would happen if, if I could go back and change this part of history where the president was never shot. And, uh, they used Lee Harvey Oswald as a lone gunman, uh, you know, thing. And so that kind of got me reinterested in the subject because it's very painful to watch that Zapruder film, at least for me. I can, I, I have to turn away most of the time. I can't, it's very hard to see the president's fucking head get blown off 65 times in a row. Uh, so I had stayed away from it for a long time because I just didn't want to see the images anymore. Uh, but I finally got back into it. Now I'm like obsessed with it. So I'll probably talk about it more. Great. Do you have any news? I I think I, I do. Yes. Good. By the way, the state of Texas... Uh, I think it's uh, Texas. I, I just clicked off the fucking website. But anyway, they have all the like witness documents documents and uh, testimonies and affidavits and photographs and everything from that day on on their website. So you can look that up. Texas Study GU or something like that. It, I can't remember what it was. But anyway, if you want to 
dove into it further. From the Fox News. Fox News, the most reputable, you know, fair and balanced type website I've ever found in my entire life. Foxnews.com. Remember right, when they used to, do they still advertise fair and balanced? Because I haven't watched Fox I News in a long time. I think they do, but I'm not sure. They've never been fair and or balanced. Well, they might have been fair, but they were never fucking balanced. But anyway, woman searching for urban myth, Pope Lick Monster. That is the greatest name for a cryptid, the Pope Lick Monster. It's the goat man. It. Anyway, well, yeah, but it's the Pope Lick Goat Man Monster. Oh. She was struck by a train. This, this woman was looking for the uh, Pope Lick Monster, and she was hit by a train. A woman was stuck, uh, struck by a train and killed Saturday night while investigating the urban legend. Well, see, now that's not fair to call it an urban legend. Maybe it's an urban fact. Called the Pope Lick Monster on railroad tracks in Louisville. That's in Kentucky for anybody who's, you know, like, stupid. Ro Roquel, I think her name is. R-O-Q-U-E-L. Roquel? Roquel? I guess. Roquel Bain. She's from Ohio. Dayton was struck by the Norfolk Southern train and fell 80 feet to the ground. Her unidentified boyfriend, unidentified boyfriend? He's the goat man. To dangle off the, he managed to uh, dangle off the bridge's edge until the train passed. She was, uh, you know, pronounced dead at the scene. The man was unhurt. I wonder if he pushed her. Oh, wait, it says there is no evidence of foul play. The yeah, homicide Steve. detectives. Fucking what, way to go, Steve. Well, you know. There's no evidence homicide of foul detectives play. still investigating. He may have, because he's unidentified. It says so. Maybe I'm he just like, doesn't maybe he just doesn't want to fucking have to deal with this bullshit. His girlfriend just died. Yeah, that's true. Come on, man. Looking for the Popelik monster. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she died looking for the Popelik monster. <laughs> I'm not. Why am I laughing at yeah, this? I why? Be. This is you because sick this is fuck. A, a warning, right? I am. Well, you know, <clears throat> this is a warning to all cryptid investigators. Just because a train track looks empty and unused doesn't mean that it is, right? So be careful out there. You know, get off your. You know, use some common sense when you're out. You know, in the field chasing rainbows. Chasing rainbows is how I like to refer to it. Oh. <laughs> anyway, he was unhurt. Uh, it's just so sad. A very pretty young girl who had her life in front of her, Jack Arnold, the coroner, told the paper, it's just so preventable, as I was just saying, I believe. Uh, the woman reportedly bought tickets for a guided ghost hunting tour at the nearby Waverly Hills Sanatorium. Uh, they reportedly started the evening in the search for the Pope Lick Monster, an urban legend that is supposed to be half goat, half man uh, he lives in trestles above the creek apparently uh, the report said the area is popular on new year's uh, in 2014 high school students reportedly posted a picture on social media that showed them dangling off the trestle the caption read the pope lick monster didn't get us but the train almost did <clears throat> i think um <clears throat> from what i've read on other websites and i apologize for the throat clearing uh is that the myth is that that train trestle is abandoned, the particular one she was on. And so they didn't realize that it was still an active uh, line. And that's kind of, you know, obviously led to tragedy. And I really do feel sorry for her boyfriend and her family. I, I, I don't mean to... Uh, I don't mean to... Be a on. dick. I don't mean to be a dick. But it is a, a testimony to the fact that we, if regardless of where you're at, what you're doing, just be fucking careful. Use your head and uh, don't get hit by a train or <laughs> anything else. You know, don't fall off a cliff because you thought you saw Bigfoot on the other side or something. You know, just be careful out there. So ABC7news.com. This is about space junk. But I guess it's big news right now. Green, a green piece of space junk uh, flies over California. It's the green streak, Southern Steve. California. It's a UFO, <clears throat> Steve. <clears throat> Pardon me while I take a drink. My throat is like fucking dry. When I talk a lot, 
and you made me do the whole show by myself tonight. When I talk a lot, uh, you know, my throat gets When you shut. talk a lot, you don't shut up. <clears throat> I know. A streak of bright green light appeared above. If so, there's a streak you know, above like, California, Steve, <laughs> it's got to be when I ancient talk a lot, aliens. When I talk a lot, I don't shut up. Isn't that saying the same thing? I don't know. But in a different way? A streak of bright green light appeared above sa Southern California on Tuesday, according to the Griffith Observatory. The flash of light was caused by quote unquote space junk possibly something in orbit that was coming back down to earth uh, astronomers said they spotted the debris with their telescope at griffith observatory the griffith observatory said it was not uncommon for this to occur 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 in december 2015 russian space debris was spotted over southern california and nevada and that one took social media by storm Officials with the U.S. Strategic Command later stated a Russian SL-4 rocket body had re-entered the atmosphere. In, new, in November 2015, a missile test flight from, the sub, from a submarine left hundreds of people from Southern California, Nevada, Arizona, perplexed as it caused a bright green light to streak across the sky. The Pentagon later released a statement explaining that the Navy Strategic Systems Programs had conducted a scheduled test of a Trident II missile from the USS Kentucky, an Ohio-class submarine. I didn't know my state had submarines. It's a UFO, Ohio. Steve. See, I think it's still more that old, you know, swamp gas, weather balloon, uh, cover-up bullshit that they did back in the day with project blue book and well project sign project grudge project blue book so i actually just today listened to the audio audio book uh flying saucers are real by donald kehoe i recommend it to anybody it's it's a really cool look into the early uh investigations of ufos it's, because it was written i believe in 1950 and it was really good so last story mimi beardsley oh wait that's the wrong link new photo of see i did that on purpose it was uh, meant yeah. to be funny but it yeah. didn't come across that way <clears throat> this is from the uh, crypto crew the crypto crew i believe thomas markham uh he says he was just recently sent a photo by a guy named ryan it was taken in maryland on 4 26 16 some may not know that there's a legend of a goat man in Maryland. It's a goat man. The public oh, my this. God, Steve. It's the goat man. He's everywhere. Uh, and it, it kind of ties into the uh, the woman who was killed while researching the Kentucky public monster on the railroad trestle there. Uh, similar thing. You know, it looks like a goat and it looks like a man. So it's a goat man. Uh, anyway, so Ryan says... And this was sent to the crypto crew via email. He says, I'm in D.C. for the GRC Summit. I don't know what any of that means. Starting yesterday, and I was playing tennis uh, on Saturday, which was the 23rd, uh, in the morning at Montpelier Park. I was While playing some, some play tennis, and I saw the goat man. <clears throat> yeah. Some friends uh, played golf at P Pawtucket Greens. As we were packing up, we saw something on the forest. It says on the forest. I mean, I'm assuming. Miriam, love, did you see the goat man? <laughs> you saw something in the forest bordering the park. <coughs> God almighty, my throat. He says as he took out his uh, camera phone, it came up on two feet, and he realized it was a goat. <laughs> I told some people back in the D back in D.C. about a goat walking on two legs, and they said it was some old Maryland goat man legend. I called WBAL in Baltimore and talked to someone about it, but I didn't think they believed me. <laughs> really? I called them and told them you saw a goat man, and they didn't believe you. Hmm. Uh, they think it's a bear holding a freshly killed goat. They ran the story uh, concluding, that, concluding that, but I think there's more to it. I started looking into cryptozoology and found... The crypto crew, so he's sending them to them. <coughs> so, I don't know. Are you going to put the photo? You should put the photo up. Should I? It see? could be a bear carrying a goat. 
when people can but when people can just go to the forty and slip dot com and see. Oh, is that where it's at? Okay. Pictures of the quote unquote Marilyn Goatman that are posted on the forty and slip dot com. The forty and slip dot com. Yes, that's the forty and slip dot com, Steve. Go there. F O T H E F O R T E A N S L I P dot com. Correct. Correct, Correct Steve. Uh, it was actually carried by WBAL in Baltimore. They did a little story on it too. According to the legend, the goat man is an axe wielding half animal, half man creature that was once a scientist who worked in the Beltsville Agricultural Research Center. Yeah, buddy. I think, they made, I, think, I think they made a comic book about him, or he was a villain or something. Apparently, he was experimenting on goats. The experiment, well, no, duh, went awry, and he began attacking cars with an axe, roaming the back roads of Beltsville, Maryland. Uh, a variation of the legend tells of the goat man as an old hermit who lives in the woods, seen walking alone at night along Fletcherton Road. Uh, the story seems to originate with an alleged sighting in 1957. The Goat Man is also said to have murdered a number of hikers in 1962. Uh, there was a follow-up uh, that the Crypto Crew did. He recontacted Ryan, and Ryan further states, I watched it standing for a few moments, and then it came down on all fours and disappeared into the thick forest. The photo was taken with his phone zoomed all the way in, and if he had to guess, it was about 30 yards away. It stood probably about seven feet tall when it was on two feet. Uh, WBAL determined it was a bear with a goat in its jaws, but that wasn't how I perceived it. Uh, so it is kind of cool. I don't think it's a bear with a goat in its mouth. <laughs> what, what, I, I just, what, I'm just what, saying. What do you think it is, Steve? I, well, to me, I haven't had a, a good, good look at the picture. It, it's actually, uh, There's a figure there, unless it's a statue standing in one spot and the guy goes around the tree. It does appear to, uh, there's several pictures, uh, it does appear that it's moving. It's not just standing in one spot. You can actually see movement on what allegedly would be the hands, uh, you know, motion blur. Uh Without video, it could be a goat man. <laughs> but without video, uh, still pictures to me can be manipulated a lot easier. Uh, uh, earlier, the first the first time I looked at it, I thought that it was perhaps a gorilla or a Bigfoot costume with a instead of a gorilla head a goat head instead uh but it's I don't it's know. satan steve he's come back i would love to see video of it uh, i mean it's impressive if impressive as far as hoaxes go um if it's a hoax and it's impressive a lot more if it's not uh i don't know maybe it's a goat woman could be I, I maybe maybe it. maybe I yeah see it. maybe we're Impressed. totally missing the gender on this one <laughs> Maybe goat people don't I have would a have gender. To say, Maybe goat people are asexual, say, Steve, and we're just perceiving everything wrong. Well, if they're asexual, how do they reproduce? Like tapeworms. How, how do they make baby? How do they make goat babies? There's got to be goat babies. They have a prehensile. Uh, uh, no, wait. They have a. What's that? Like, uh, don't jackals. Is it jackals? Or some fucking creature over in Africa? The females have a faux penis. A faux penis. Yeah. Huh. So what? <laughs> that but, still doesn't but imagine, the yeah, no, that they... that would work. So if they're asexual and they they have this faux penis, but they still have a vagina, they can fuck each other and uh, create offspring. The yeah, goat people. How do they create? Yeah, not with a faux penis. No, a faux penis wouldn't be. I'm just saying that it works. They're hermaphroditic. So Steve. like a strap on, maybe? No. That's a, I mean, they actually have a penis, that's but it's an not apparatus. a real penis. Well, yeah, but still, that's a faux penis, is it not? It can be. 
A strap on I would guess. still be a faux penis. I guess, Steve. Right. Okay. It's a figure of speech, you know, Steve. It's, it's terminal. It's it's all in terminology and and semantics, Chris. Yeah. You know, Goat man. you know who wouldn't give me all this shit? Mick West. We've been trying to end this show for like 20 minutes. <laughs> I have. <laughs> this has been the 40 and Slip. You wanted to end it before it started. <laughs> <laughs> Episode 112. The I Shot the Sheriff, But I Didn't Shoot the Kennedy episode. If you like this shit, hit the thumbs up button. If you don't, hit the little thumbs down button. Leave a comment. Subscribe. Share this shit around, people. Share it. Everywhere. Uh, go to the 40 slipcom You can check out the pictures of the goat man there. Uh-huh. Uh, go to youtube.com forward slash dreadfun and dreadfun.com as always check out uh, the non-existent special guest Matt Knapp at bigfootcrossroads.com and check out Steve wherever he may be on the internet because the green streaks on the uh, forwardingslip.com too correct you can see the green streak there as well You cannot see the lady got hit by the train, though. I don't think that's there. The story's there. Mm. So there, Steve. See ya!